So two very similar data types present in most databases, be it relational or non-relational, that we use to store date times is date time and timestamp. In this video, I'd like to walk you through on the difference between these two data types and it would help you make a decision on which one to use when. Because it's very common that, hey, you think, hey, let me store everything in date time. But at some cases, date time is not good, right? It's not efficient. It's, it causes mild inconveniences as well. In other cases, you might think, hey, let's just store epoch everywhere and let's just go with timestamp or an integer that has its own disadvantages as well, right? So let's go deeper into what each of these data type does, how are they performant, which one to use, when and where and why, right? Okay. So let's start with the first one. So the date time, uh, what it does is it stores not only the date part of it, but the time part of it as well. So it stores date time as quote unquote date time. The range of date time is pretty huge. So what it does is it stores the date starting from 1st January year 1000 to 31st December year 9999. Right? And because it stores date time, it starts from the first second. So 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0th hour, 0th minute, 0th second till 23rd hour. 59th minute, 59th seconds, right? So it, it covers a massive spectrum of date time. Then comes another type called timestamp. In timestamp, what we do, or what database does rather, database stores the timestamp as epoch, which means number of seconds elapsed since 1st January 1970. Right? So it stores it as a raw integer. So you'd say, hey, but if it is storing as an integer, why it is called as timestamp? Or rather, why there is a separate data type called timestamp? Why can't we just use integer? Because it's for your database to know that, hey, the value that is being stored over here, it is an epoch timestamp, which means that when you are retrieving, convert, like if you are using on the client side, use it as a date time. So whatever programming language you are using, it would convert it into date time. That's what your driver does. So it's a special way for your database to understand that although I'm storing an integer, treat this as a date time, which means treat this as a timestamp and then convert it to date time and have some operations on top of it, whatever they want to do. Okay. Now, the interesting part over here is because we are storing the number of seconds elapsed since 1st January 1970 as an integer, it has a limit. Integer has a limit, so integers are 32 bits. So the maximum value it can go till is 2 raised to 32, which is roughly 4 billion or rather more than 4 billion. So the range, the date range, what it can cover when you store timestamp is much lesser than date time. You can cover a range from 1st January 1970, 0th hour, 0th minute, 0th second till 19th of January 2038. 031407. Uh, it seems pretty odd that hey, why this? But it's basically 2 raised to 32. Right? That's why you see this kind of thing. So now here you can see that hey, if your use case needs you to store date time which goes beyond 2038, you cannot use timestamp. Right? Then all obviously databases will come up with other data types to store and extend it. For example, uh an 8 byte integer it might store, like the timestamp might modify in later versions of databases. But you see the drill that hey, if your use case, if your current use case requires you to store a date time which is far away in the future, let's say more than 2038th here, you cannot use you cannot use timestamp. Right? Okay. Apart from this, it is very much a very common need that hey. I don't want to just store till seconds. I want to go till microseconds level granularity. So what do you do? When you are going till that level of granularity, databases, most relational databases, especially when I'm talking about, they give you an option to specify fractional seconds, which is microsecond, milliseconds and whatnot. The way it does it is by this as a convention, dot 9999999. So basically six digits after decimal covering the microseconds part of it. Now, obviously, this is not part of your native storage, which means that when we say that, hey, my date time takes up five bytes to store the data, it does not count the amount of bytes required to store the fractional seconds part of it. The idea here being that in most common use cases, it's the seconds, the time spent till seconds is what matters and not microseconds. Very few use cases require you to go, to go at a granular level than a second. Right? So that's why databases, they give you as an optional thing. Now, but when you are going in that level of granularity, you need extra space to store the information. 
So which is where what your database does and, and this is very specific to MySQL, but you get the idea like other databases would have something very similar. So go through the documentation to understand how they're doing it. But this is little specific to MySQL, but you would open up your mind around how date times and timestamp actually work because that concepts remain fairly similar across all databases. Okay. So fractional seconds take up to, uh, takes up to zero to three bytes, depending on the precision. So if let's say you don't want any precision, you don't want to store fractional seconds at all. So it takes up zero bytes. So when you're not representing anything, it would just go with zero. So it would not require any space to store it. If you're going for two digit precision, then you require one extra byte, four digit precision, then you require two extra byte and six digit precision you require three extra bytes. This way, your core storage for date time is five bytes, timestamp is four bytes, but depending on how uh, how of, how much of a precision you require on the fractional side, you can it takes up that much of extra space, right? One byte, two byte, three byte, or zero byte, right? So this is MySQL specific, where the date time object takes up five bytes, while timestamp object takes up four bytes, and it sources as an integer. Right? Now let's go deeper. Let's go deeper into understanding what date time actually does how it stores and when to use it. So date time, typically you would use date time when you are storing something which is use case specific. For example, let's say you're building um, an, a doctor appointment booking application. So the appointment time, that could be a date time. You'd say, yeah, but that could also be a timestamp. Yes, that can be a timestamp. But what we are doing over here is this is user specific thing, which is a point in time specific and very static that hey, this is when this would happen. So an event in a calendar, that is one more example, the uh, appointment that you're booking, movie booking timings and whatnot, like something which is scheduled to execute at something, something that you are showing to the user. Right. This is a very general, it is not a hard bound that you cannot use timestamp. You can use timestamp there. But the advantage of using date time in those cases is that your databases give you native functions to perform operations on dates. For example, date underscore add, which adds a certain interval or a certain offset in your date column. And then you can do operations on top of it. Right. So when you want those native features, to work with date time, your database already gives you those tools. When you would want to leverage that, it is better that you store your, you type your column as date time instead of a timestamp or even a native integer. Right? Other thing that we saw is that date time covers a massive range from 1000 here to 9999. Now what this tells us is just by, because timestamp requires four bytes, but it gives you only till 2038 by just adding that one extra byte and storing it in date time gives you this massive range, much longer than what timestamp is giving you, right? So this way, when you know that you are storing a huge amount of range or your data that you would be storing will be, might cover this even uh, 1000 year or even beyond 2038, you have to go with date time, right? And the best part is that date time objects, they are human readable. So when you fire a select query on your MySQL console or view it there. You can literally see the date time object and you can interpret, okay, this is the date, this is the year, this is the one. You can very easily interpret it. In case of timestamp, you cannot because it's just an integer versus number of seconds elapsed. You cannot do that calculation and see, oh, which date is this? It, for you, it's just a number there, right? Okay, given this, when should we use timestamp? Timestamps are stored as integers in your database. So literally on disk, it is stored as binary encoded integers and it is stored in UTC. Why? Because it's epoch seconds, number of seconds elapsed since 1st January 1970 as per UTC. Okay. Now, when we are talking about this, it is because as it is as per UTC, one thing to remember is whenever we are connecting to a database, we can specify the time zone in which we are communicating to that database. Now, which means that whenever you pass date time and you are being when you want to store it as timestamp, your database does this implicit conversion from your native time zone to UTC before storing. And when you retrieve, it converts it into the time zone that is requested by the query and sends it back. So it is possible that you might, that the value that you are seeing changes with time, depending on what is the time zone of the connection. So if your application is working with multiple time zones, 
just be aware of this fact that depending on the connection that is established to the database and the time zone settings of it will affect this particular value. Always remember this because although timestamp is the static unit in time that is there which is stored in UTC, consider this fact that depending on which one is reading your data, which connection, what time zone is set in that, it would affect it. Right? Okay. But we can think of timestamps as very lightweight. Very is a strong word because it's just one byte better than date time. FYI, before MySQL version 5.6.4, date time used to take up 8 bytes and not 5 bytes. While timestamp used to take up 4 bytes. So there was a 2x difference in storage. Right? So it would be very lightweight. But now the current version of MySQL has it at 5 bytes only. So it's just one byte better. So in most cases, you should be tempted to go towards date time, but it's not a hard bound rule. Right. Okay. Given that what we are storing in timestamp is the number of seconds elapsed in a very uh, simple format, which is integer. What we get is what we typically use it for is to record system time for a particular event. For example, when you tweeted a post, created at is a timestamp. Transaction time is a timestamp. Metric ingestion time is a timestamp. Something event happening, you just want to record it. You don't want to do a lot of processing on that. In that case, that sort of columns fit very well in case of timestamp because it's very efficient to store, very efficient to process, very quick to read, no extra in-memory objects required to hold the data. Right? It's very, 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 very lightweight as compared to data because imagine when you're creating a date time object in any programming language you have year month date those attributes and you have this class that you create it's just an integer over here very fast right so your database can process things having timestamp much faster than what it can do with date time right and this is what are the core differences between date time and timestamp right so just to give you a gist use date time when you are storing something user specific which is time zone sensitive and timestamp when you just want to record an event. It's a very general rule, not a hard bound. You can crisscross any day and no one's going to blame you for that. Right? But depending on the use case, just do a small benchmark and see which one fits your needs. In most cases, date time gives you this very nice convenience of, hey, it does not matter which programming language I use, it would convert it into the date time object and I can just start using it, be it Java, be it Python, be it Golang. Right? With time zone, you might have to do a little extra. And when storing a raw integer, definitely you have to do a lot more extra. But think of the functionality that your database provides out of the box and use it to build your next feature. So this is what I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.